I'm going to ask uh, Thomas Zunekratki to come to the floor. Uh, he will be talking about um, the agro-environmental scheme in Austria. Um, we heard some lectures before also about this agri-environmental um, well, issues, possibilities of agricultural lands for grasshoppers. Um, the floor is yours. Thank you, Dardin. Uh, we heard already yesterday from Poland that the uh, funds from the um, European Union in the agricultural uh, are very important for the preservation of, of habitats. Uh, I've, the bad news from Austria is that it doesn't uh, save the farmers. We had in the last 30 years, we had a loss of 50% of farms abandoned and the fields of them are um, switched to the remaining more intensive farmers. But uh, did, it, did it save the grasshoppers? And this was a, a study my colleagues Georg Bieringer, Thomas Holzer and me could uh, conduct in the year 2018. And uh, I want to present uh, our results here. hope quick enough. Um, you know, Austria joined the European Union in 1995, and uh, it had also to implement uh, the, the common agricultural policy. And uh, Austria constructed some special um, funding system, the Austrian Program for uh, uh, Environmental Friendly Agriculture. And it has, an, it is a very, very powerful uh, instrument concerning the funds. We have in the six years from 2014 to 2019, our farmers got more than 2.6 billion uh, euro on, f on funds from uh, agricultural funding. And there are 24 different measures pointed to the biodiversity friendly and biodiversity increasing um, measures. But the strange thing in all these years since 95, there was not a single uh, evidence-based uh, nationwide evaluation of this program. So there was really, really large amounts of money spent, but no one really looked uh, on what happened in the landscape. There, there were many, in fact, Austria has to evaluate this program. There were many theoretical uh, research. There was uh, evaluation of existing data, but no data precisely collected for this um, topic. We, uh, we had the possibility, the Ministry of Agriculture financed this study, uh, to, we had an, our approach was um, we wanted to measure the effectiveness of uh, the certain measures designated to support biodiversity in the agriculture. We used uh, grasshoppers and butterflies as indicator species. We had two, um, two uh, modules. The one is we took top species, so species with a high uh, nature conservation uh, value, uh, endangered, protected, and looked if the, uh, we used uh, data we had from our extensive researches, grasshoppers and butterflies, and looked how uh, are they covered by, can they be covered by funds, are they living in agricultural landscape, um, is, are these measures focused on the areas where these um, species of, of conservation interest live, and are the, is the construction of the measures, so the, the methods, the, the, the management the farmers have to do, do they uh, match the needs of the, of the species? This was our top species module. And the other one is we wanted to assess in the normal landscape, because top species are often very localized species. We wanted to look in the normal landscape if um, the... Uh, fields with biodiversity supporting measures have more species than uh, the next field uh, or grassland with no fundings. This was our outdoor module because we went, uh, a large group of researchers went out. We had uh, good some 22, 23, 4, some 20 uh, species each uh, in this top species uh, module like Dotius Taurus brevicollis, very typical. 
Then we took seven uh, widespread species, we call them the farmland species, which are typical for not too intensive uh, agriculture and have a wide range, so living in whole Austria, like Tecticus verocivorus or like uh, Stenobotus lineatus. And uh, this was our set for this top species module. And for the outdoor module, we, have, we, took, uh, we had a set on uh, evenly distributed uh, plots over whole uh, Austria. We took, uh, in this case, a field with no fundings, with no uh, biodiversity supporting fundings. And we assessed uh, species richness compared to what you have. Uh, I will just show you here for fields, there are 10 different methods to uh, get funding for biodiversity increasing m measures. One is uh, eco-farming, one is uh, blooming crops, one is um, greening, uh, greening with nitrogen fixing uh, plants, one is greening with set aside, one is the uh, ecologically, uh, it's, in Austria it's called DIF, uh, biodiversity uh, set aside. You can have a certain expert-based nature conservation set aside where um, an ecologist goes there with the farmer and, and they debate which will be the best measure. This is the, of the one with the highest quality, I say. Then you have 20 year set aside. This is the one uh, which has the highest funds, 20 years, uh, no. Then you can make uh, mowing on your fields, so it's you can turn a wheat field into a meadow with these uh, funds. And then we have uh, fundings for landscape elements, for something with, we assess one, and elements dominated by herbs and elements dominated by woody structures. So we have 10 measures tested in arable fields, six measures, measures tested in uh, grassland, and uh, eight different me measures were possible for uh, alpine lands, uh, habitats. This was our method. We had uh, a two kilometer diameter. We had uh, 30 such circles for arable land, 36 for grassland, and six for mountains, evenly distributed over Austria. And in every circle, we, assess, we took some normal field and, the, and, the, uh, and up to 10 uh, possible measures. We made transect counts for grasshoppers, just uh, a strip with 20 meters and one meters on each side. We visited twice for butterflies. We had a uh, circle diameter of 40 meters and we assessed species richness. We don't count individuals, we assessed how many species are there. With our outdoor model, we reached at least 50% of the whole Austrian bio, bio, biodiversity of these uh, both groups. Very abundant normally, but also quite rare species of uh, agricultural areas. So we managed to reach a large proportion of the biodiversity of these two targets, uh, of these two indicators. The, uh, the top species uh, module, Gave, gave, rather, uh, gave, gave rather good results. So on average, 50% of, um, of the localities where these top species occur could be reached by, um, by these um, biodiversity-friendly measures. So we can support them with, the, uh, with our fundings. For instance, Tinobotus fishery, almost 100% of the occurrence in Austria is on arable fields where you can Set fundings, but we have species like Sargobedo where nowadays only 30% are there. And you know, in Austria, like in many other countries, most of the uh, fundings in, for nature con conservation in agricultural areas go to um, go via these uh, funds. So it's hard to get for the 70% not in these uh, areas some. Money. We found out that this expert-based uh, nature conservation measure is very strongly focused on, uh, on the occurrences of these top species, but there was an even better um, way to, to identify places of top species. It's certain land use, so uh, meadows mown only once, 
um, extensive pastures, litter meadows and mountain meadows, they host most of these top species. So it's, for instance, for Epochromius corulibes, uh, the moan meadows, meadows moan only once, where 60 times more focused on the occurrences of this than on our um, compared comparison plots. What was the effect of our auto module? You know, we, we compared the fields with, the, um, with these ten, 10 different possibilities I showed you before. And it turned out that all measures um, turning a field, field into a fallow land uh, were significantly uh, positive for the, uh, for the number of species. So it doesn't, it, there was no significant difference between this uh, greening or 20 years or nature conservation. Uh, the important thing was fallow land, but we, we saw differences. We could identify that um, up to 15 plant species in and uh, a differentiated management could increase uh, the species richness of the fallow lands. We found out that uh, a threshold of 8% of fallow land in a landscape increases the value of the single uh, fallow in, in these plots. We also found out that landscape elements are very important, especially for the uh, better diversity of the landscape and all other message, um, measures uh, with the label uh, biodiversity friendly had no significant effect with the exception of nitrogen fixing uh, medicago sativa, the alfalfa fields. And we showed that from all fields with biodiversity friendly measures, 26% were effective. And this means only 7% of the whole uh, arable land in Austria has an um, has a measure with an, uh, with an effect on biodiversity of these two species. And in, in grassland, it was even, even worse. We found only uh, nature conservation grassland with, which was mown only once, which is, which is quite uh, unusual, had a positive effect. And the expert-based nature conservation had a positive effect not on uh, number of species, but on uh, presence of uh, threatened and declining sp and specialist species. Landscape elements were also important, but all other measure measures had no effects. This results in only 10% of, um, of all meadows with, uh, with these biodiversity funds had an effect on species richness, which is 6% of whole grassland in Austria. So the effectiveness is very, very low. Why was it, especially this was also for us, it was a big surprise because there are so many measures. The problem is, you see here four, grass, uh, four, four meadows. Everyone, the, the left one is the reference without funding. The other ones have fundings in a different, uh, with a different label, eco-farming, deep nature conservation. The photos are all from the same day, 77, 70th July, very good grasshopper time and you see no difference. So you really, really get what you see. If the measures are not strong enough to, to result in some difference in the, uh, during grasshopper time, you see also no effect in the species richness. And we found, we, we made very intensive uh, re-assessment uh, also uh, what was happening on the special site. And to get a significant uh, increase in species richness, you have to postpone the mowing of the, the first mowing to by eight weeks. This is something like the 10th of July. So if there was at this day uh, still no mowing, it would have resulted in, in uh, larger species richness. Or you, can, you need a break between two mowing cycles by 10 weeks. We also assessed, uh, we checked if there was a correlation between the amount of money the farmer gets and the species his field hosts, and there was absolutely no correlation between these two um, factors. So just my, uh, our summary, support the preservation of low impact grassland is very important. So meadows won once, mown once. <laughs> litter meadows, mountain meadows, very important 
and uh, extensive pasture, the Hutweide we call in German, um, preserve and increase amount of landscape elements, very central uh, element for the uh, preservation of biodiversity in agriculture, support set aside in, in arable fields, perfectly minimum of 8%, and support measures in grassland at least 5% with this delayed first mowing or with the break of 10 weeks between two mowings. And uh, to strengthen this expert-based because all these measures are, uh, can be taken by the farmer, and, and there's only one measure where really an ecologist is with the farmer on the field or on the grassland, and this is very important to uh, support the occurrence of threatened and endangered species. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I think we have room for one question. Is there anyone here? Not online? No. Yeah, one. Just one question. Uh, so Dan Stahl from Naturalis. Um, uh, the landscape elements uh, made me think of agroforestry, and so I wonder if that was anywhere within the schemes that you uh, were about. Sorry? Agroforestry as a technique? No, no, agroforestry is very rare in Austria. So the landscape elements are just, you know, some tree, some strip, some small uh, edge of a, of a field, not used for, like in agroforestry. Okay. But I think they can be helpful too, yeah. Okay. Thank you.